Hey, everyone. Today on The Final Bar, I'm talking with Dana Lyons from uh, J. Lyons Fund Management in the Chicago area. We'll talk about this market that just keeps attempting to push to new swing highs, but it keeps failing to do so. The major average is finishing in a position of weakness. The S&P down 1.5%. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Final Bar. Hey guys, welcome to The Final Bar. I'm your host, Dave Keller. I'm the Chief Market Strategist here at StockCharts.com in a rainy Redmond, Washington. Thanks for joining us every weekday after the close as we break down the activity in the markets using the power of Stock Charts. The Stock Charts platform was created to help you make sense of these markets using the best practices of technical analysis. I have learned over the last 22-ish years uh, that technical analysis is one of the most compelling ways to improve your market awareness, what I call your situational awareness as an investor. What's working, what's not working, what is uh, starting to turn higher, what's starting to turn lower, what's breaking out, what's breaking down. And when we think about the major averages, I think there's a lot of different tools you can bring to bear to try to make sense of things. You can look at sentiment measures. You can see what people are saying about their thoughts on the markets. You can look at uh, breadth indicators and look at market participation and see which stocks are performing in line with the indexes. Or you can just look at the price of the major indexes. One of my mentors, Ralph Ekampour, always said, if you have nothing else, have a daily chart of the S&P 500 and, and understand everything you can from that chart. I'm seeing an S&P that is attempting numbers of times to get above 4,000, failing so far every time to do so today really uh, once again being repelled, trying to get above that trend line from the 2022 highs. Let's get right into our market recap. Let's look at what happened uh, today and then connect today's action with a bigger picture. When you're looking at our market dashboard, you can see the two-day uh, preview chart. Yesterday looks pretty mild, and it was kind of a low volatility, compressed uh, price action uh, yesterday, although in the afternoon, we sort of rolled over just a little bit to finish toward the lows. Today, we moved higher out of the open, but through the course of the day, just continued to get less and less uh, compelling here. I ran a scan for stocks uh, soon after the open, looking for stocks making new swing highs and new swing lows. And as the day went on, my list got smaller and smaller of the stocks making new swing highs because they kept pulling back here. And you're finding actually some distribution patterns, uh, short-term patterns on some uh, individual names. We'll see if I can find some of those and bring them up for you uh, on the course of the uh, of the day here. The S&P 500 finishing just below 3930. That's down 1.6% from yesterday. Mid caps and small caps all down uh, as well. The VIX uh, moving higher, uh, which is uh, the only green you see on the uh, on the front page here in the equity space, is volatility, which tends to move inversely to uh, to the underlying uh, benchmark. So we talked about how the VIX had gone below 20 and how that could be a sign of a new kind of volatility regime, right, where the market's progressing higher on lower volatility. The, this week so far now, we've seen a bit of a re mean reversion where we've seen volatility actually popping back higher, moving back above 20, while the major average is pulling back from the recent uh, swing highs. We'll look at each of those charts here uh, in a few moments if we can. Interest rates overall coming down uh, yet again. So 10-year yields down below 3.4%, around 338. Long bond yields around 354. The dollar index essentially flat from uh, from yesterday. So today was one of those bonds up, stocks down kinds of day. We haven't had a lot of those, to be honest with you, as I'm thinking about it. Uh, but certainly was, of course, today. Gold, a really interesting uh, day for sure, was one of the better charts right out of the open in terms it was sort of moving higher along with uh, equities. But you can see that that was sort of the high watermark for the day. The whole rest of the morning, uh, the GLD was coming off and finished off more toward the lows of the day. It was only down 0.3%, but you can see the broad commodity complex, a lot of red to be seen uh, right there. Same to be said for cryptocurrencies. So we have a Bitcoin uh, dipping back below 21,000. It was getting up toward 22,000 over the last 24 hours. Ether price is down 2.6%. And all 10 of the uh, top coins that we track on our platform, all in the red uh, through the course of the uh, of the day today. Let's look briefly at a chart of the S&P 500, and you'll see what I mean when I talk about the market repelling this advance. What I mean by that is, you know, I tend to, to think of the market on multiple timeframes. You know, of course, you're thinking about the short-term movements. Anytime you bring up 
the current market. You're thinking about the uh, percent move today or just the action today, uh, what the overall sentiment is in the market. But most importantly for me as more of a medium-term, long-term investor is connecting today's action to the bigger picture. And when I'm looking at the bigger picture over the last 12 to 18 months, I'm seeing an S&P that clearly rotated from an accumulation phase in 2021. Didn't life seem so much simpler if you think back then, right? This nice, consistent uptrend Pullbacks on the S&P, I don't think we're any more than 4 or 5% at worst. Overall, it's just this nice, consistent, slow and steady uh, uptrend. I think pretty much every uh, month in 2021 was uh, uh, made a new high, if not uh, if not all of them. Then 11 or 10 or 11 out of 12 months were positive, uh, ha had positive uh, uptrends. Compare that to what we've seen today. When people ask me, what does a bear market look like? I think these last two years, 2021 and 2022, maybe the textbook example I start to share with people. Look at what happened on the left side. Look at what happened on the right side. Look at how we rotated. This is 2021 into the early days of 2023. And this green trend line that I keep referring to, I think is just a, a very simple, but very powerful visual representation of the pace of this downtrend. You connect the major highs pretty much every quarter in 2022, and it lines up almost perfectly with the high that we've seen this week. This is a represent. Now, is that magic? Is that some mythical formula? I, I don't know about that. What I would tell you is the market tends to trend. We know that from John Murphy and Edwards and McGee and Gann and, and uh, uh, Charles Dow and all of those talked about trends and talked about how you quantify them. But trendline analysis, which really Edwards and McGee really popularized, thinking about patterns and trends and how to uh, how to annotate them, how to represent them, a trend line like this, where the market just continues to test it, just shows you that the market is moving at a particular pace because we're on a log scale. This is basically a consistent downtrend on percentage terms. And anytime the market rallies, it's basically hitting the upper end of this downtrend channel, and it tells you that the downtrend is still in place. And the general, most simple way to use a chart like this is to wait to see when the trend line is broken. And you can do a lot of crazy stuff underneath the trend line, but until you break above it, that downtrend is still in force. And, and by definition, as long as we remain below that, the slope of the market is still uh, still lower, regardless of what kind of rallies we have underneath that trend line. You could say the same thing uh, in a lot of ways about the 200-day moving average. Uh, one of my mentors, and I've forgotten who said nothing good happens below the 200 day. And that was his way of just saying, don't get too cute. Don't get too excited. When stocks are in a downtrend and then they break above the 200 day moving average, that's when it tells you something is different, right? Something is changing, what we call a change of character. So have we seen that on chart of the S&P 500 uh, yet? I don't think so, right? We've broken above the 200 day yet again. We're now trading back below it as we have a number of times in the last uh, 12 months. We are now trading up to that trend line, which is currently right around 4,000. We're back below it. Uh, and so overall, until those lines are broken, until we get enough buying power to push us above and overwhelm the selling pressure that builds when we get to these levels, I would argue by definition, the trend is still uh, is still downward. What's so interesting about this market is if you think about the breadth conditions, they're not bad. They're actually pretty decent, I would say, right? And what Brett is doing, of course, is looking not just at the price action weighted to the mega cap stocks, which is what the S&P and most of our major benchmarks are doing. This is more an equal weighted measure of participation. Stocks overall, on average, are going up or going down. All four of the advanced decline lines for the, near, for the uh, uh, cap tiers that we track, the New York Stock Exchange, large cap, mid cap, small caps, all four of those have broken above their December highs. If we look at uh, the percent of stocks above their 50-day, it's currently around 60%. The percent of stocks, sorry, above their 200-day, currently at 60%. Above their 50-day, same number, about 60%. So four, six out of 10 uh, stocks in both uh, buckets or in, in each bucket above those key moving averages. So more than half of the members of the index above their uh, moving averages, I see that as a positive. So what does that mean, right? A bear market shows fail breakout. Stocks that should break out fail to do so. You don't have that follow through. And that's the question mark I would have for this market really going through the remainder of this week and into next week. Do these breadth indicators get below 50%? To me, that would be a big red flag suggesting that the bullish movement you've seen in the average stock, which has allowed the benchmarks to go as high as they have, would now be starting to deteriorate. So we haven't seen that yet, but that is an important uh, level. And you can see that in uh, mid-December, when we pulled back, we remain pretty much above 50%. So that, that's an important level to watch uh, if we would push back to the downside. 
Just to finish off our market recap, looking at the uh, at the 11 sector ETFs, you can see all 11 of them in the red, and it goes from kind of bad communication services, technology, consumer discretionary. So the FANG sectors actually did the best today, although they are still all down about one and a quarter percent, down to the uh, biggest leaders to the downside, consumer staples, utilities, and financial. Staples are interesting, and I was actually looking at some of these stocks um, for my premium members at Market Misbehavior earlier today, I was writing a note looking for stocks making new swing highs and new swing lows. We spent a little bit of time on these consumer staple stocks. You can see like General Mills. Is it completely broken? Of course not, right? We're still you know, not making a three-month low or anything. We broke below the 50-day moving average. That's not great. Um, we're making a new swing low. We're getting below 82. That's not great either. Is it the worst chart I've ever seen? Absolutely not. I could show you many other stocks that look a lot worse than this, but stocks that had been leadership, stocks that have been performing very, very well, where something's changing, that's what uh, rings a bell for me. So when I'm looking at uh, General Mills and I'm looking at Kraft Heinz and seeing these big drawdowns, um, are they breaking key support levels? Maybe, maybe not. Does it tell me that something is different that I need to be aware of? Certainly. And so I think as always, today is a great reminder to keep your stops updated, to keep your money management strategy up to date, and always be thinking at what level, what line in the sand would need to be triggered for you to change your perspective on a particular position. Let's take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with today's guest, Dana Lyons. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to The Final Bar. This is Dave Keller here at StockCharts.com. It is a pleasure to put the show on for you every weekday at the close, and we appreciate you so much joining us. A couple of quick announcements before we bring on today's guest. First off, we welcome your questions. We had a great mailbag segment, a short one yesterday. We'll do another one on Friday's show, and we'd love to answer one of your questions live on the air. Our email is thefinalbar at StockCharts.com. We're on Twitter at FinalBarSCTV, and we're on YouTube. Put a comment below the video you're watching on our Stock Charts YouTube channel. We'll hope to answer your question on Friday's show. You can go to StockChartsTV.com. That is our on-demand platform. We are so fortunate to have some really knowledgeable, experienced guests like Dana Lyons, uh, like Jeff Hirsch, like Katie Stockton, Mark Newton. Uh, so many great conversations we've had in recent days, in recent weeks, in recent months. All of those discussions are available for your, uh, your, your enjoyment for free at StockChartsTV.com. Around your mobile device, just search for Stock Charts TV on demand. I did want to let you know about some of the guests we have coming up. I'm excited to catch up with uh, Dana Lyons here in a few moments. Uh, tomorrow on Thursday, the 19th, we have Tom Boley from Earnings Beats uh, joining us. We did a market outlook uh, that Tom participated in last week. It was a lot of fun. So we'll pick on some of those things we talked about and see what this week is uh, doing to Tom's take on the overall uh, overall market environment. Next week on Tuesday, the 24th, we have Willie Delwich the uh, chief strategist at All Star Charts. And then on Wednesday, the 25th, Katie Stockton of Fairlead Strategies. I want to welcome on today's guest, Dana Lyons. Dana's a portfolio manager at J Lyons Fund Management, also the editor of a very well done uh, report called the Lion Share Report, coming to us from the Chicago area. Dana, Happy New Year. Great to see you. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back, Dave. And uh, and I always have to say this on a big uh, on a big disruptive day. Thank you for taking time out of market activity to share some insights with us. I know it was an acceleration to the downside uh, out of the close, but you're bringing some good long-term perspective with us. We talked about a version of this chart on some of your previous discussions. Can you talk us through what this is telling us, what it tells us about what to expect going forward? Sure, Dave. So uh, our our view is that we're in a longer-term bear market. And uh, we brought I brought a couple of these charts on uh, in the past few shows that I've been on just to uh, demonstrate why we think that. And, and uh, from a long-term perspective, we have what we call background indicators, which are long-term kind of cyclical uh, types of market measures. And they measure the amount of excess or um, uh, discount in the market in terms of various metrics. And like the other uh, data that I've shown before, this one takes a look at the uh, CAPE, 
ratio or the cyclical adjusted price to earnings ratio, basically a, a measure of valuation of the market. And like those other charts that I've had on before, this shows that the market is ex still extremely expensive. You know, uh, we've come down, we've taken some froth out of the market uh, because of the, uh, the decline in, in 2022. But really, we, we were at, you know, we came into last year, basically the second most uh, expensive this market has ever been. And we've really pulled back to only uh, to a level around 30 times, which is what has basically only been exceeded in the 2000 bubble and then briefly in 1929. So from that perspective, um, if you look at the uh, forward 10 year uh, S&P expected returns, still still very poor just because of the excess that's still in the system and and the degree of risk that's still in the system going forward. So this chart, just so people are, are familiar, the red series, which is the four 10-year returns, plotted inversely, right? So valuations going higher. This is suggesting that your forward-looking returns projected based on the historical trends, sort of negative, not, not particularly attractive, given the higher valuations. Is that fair? Correct, correct. There's still, like I said, despite the froth that was removed from the system, you know, in 2022, we're still very extended on a historical basis. And from that perspective, 10-year uh, returns in the S&P historically have been uh, very muted. I feel like so many investors, particularly newer investors, are so short-term oriented with, with life, with our attention spans. But th a chart like this, really thinking about the long-term implications of uh, valuation expansion, which we which we saw really, really helpful, uh, Dana. Your second chart really speaks to leadership within the markets. What can you tell us here? Sure. So even within a longer-term bear market, there will be places where, um, at least during those intermediate to cyclical up moves within a long-term bear market, there will be places where you can take uh, take advantage. There'll be pockets of opportunity, and we think one of those pockets emerging is value, especially relative to growth. So you can see at the end of the chart, value as a po as uh, relative to growth has been gaining steam over the last couple of years since. Uh, basically since the COVID uh, move. So uh, looking at past, we've only seen, at least in the last couple of decades, we've only seen one similar type move and that, was, uh, that, that began in 2000 and lasted for about six years. Now, obviously the first you know, third of that or half of that, um, a lot of that outperformance came on the back of growth, which was just getting decimated, mm -hmm. which is, similar to what we're seeing right now. So if growth continues on a downward path, um, value will be an important place to be in relative to growth, just uh, it'll be important to uh, avoid being in growth. But we think even on an absolute basis, uh, value is not nearly as, uh, uh, as expensive as growth is. So even within a longer term bear market, I think there will be opportunities even to grow your money in some value areas on an absolute basis, not just on a, uh, uh, a relative basis versus growth. It's such a it's such a helpful chart, and I and I again going back to some of the newer investors, I feel like a lot of investors certainly and and many watching the show today probably learn to invest somewhere along this this part of the chart, right? So they've known nothing more and nothing other than. A bull market means you own growth stocks, right? And that's just kind of what you do. So if we're bullish, we need to own growth. What would you tell them about this first part of the chart, which is arguably maybe more the conditions that we're doing now? How do you make sense of that? How do you how do you reprogram yourself to be looking for opportunities maybe outside of the growthy stuff that's been leadership for so many years now? Right. Well, uh, like I said, a, a, an important component of that will be avoiding those growth stocks that mm. have getting killed and will continue to be. Uh, but uh, even outside of that, you want to look for uh, stocks, areas of the market that are not expensive, that are holding up uh, relatively well from a price perspective, even when growth gets hit. Mm. Um, probably areas of the market that have not been, uh, that did not participate much in the, uh, in the previous rally. Um, so from that basis, you want to look like we saw in 2000, you know, a lot of stocks topped out in, and people don't remember this in 99 or 98 and suffered a bear market from 98 to 2000. And just when right. dot com stocks were topping in 2000 and crashed into 2002, some stocks were bottoming. A, a large swath of the market was bottoming in 2000. So you want to look for stocks that 
are hitting higher highs, hitting higher lows, maybe even hitting all time highs or 52 week highs, um, even in the midst of uh, a broader bear market. Very, very helpful. And, and thanks so much for that. Your, your final chart here, uh, Dana, is looking at an area of the market that's actually shown some good strength, your mid-cap value. Can you talk us through this one? Yeah. So speaking to your last question, what are we looking for in terms of opportunities in the market um, within that type of a value environment? And this is one type of a, 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 a factor that we'd be looking for, you know, a, a, a chart like this. This is the um, Invesco mid cap pure value ETF. Uh, so it's pure value. It's um, it, it, re it strips out all the growth, but just from a price perspective, I heard you talking about before I came on about uh, focusing purely on, on price, if nothing else. And from that perspective, you can see this ETF, despite the uh, horrid 2022 that, uh, that most of the market suffered, this one is already back up testing the all time highs. So you want to see um, stocks, you want to see segments of the market that have been resilient uh, after, especially after a bottom, um, even when there's uh, potential fuel for an intermediate term rally. Uh, you don't mm -hmm. want something, you know, uh, beaten down like, like growth, like tech, like NASDAQ, that'll have that mean reversion pop off of the bottom, but will run out of gas quickly. So something like this uh, RFB, the mid cap pure value, we're already testing, you know, all time highs and we've been going sideways basically for two years. So if the market does have an intermediate rally in it, this thing, if it if it breaks out, it's still got plenty of fuel to put in a meaningful rally. And by by that I mean higher highs and higher lows, not you know, a mean reversion rally to another lower high. Like I think we'll continue to see in the growth and the tech and the NASDAQ area of the market. Mm, it's, it's such a great, uh, such a great chart. Thanks for talking through that and, and a great, uh, great, great uh, call pointing out just the strength that you see in some areas of the of the market here. You know, given those assumptions that you that you made, you mentioned sort of overall, you're sort of in the bearish uh, perspective, longer term about where things are happening. How do you position yourself in this sort of environment, given the uncertainty of what what that means? Are there areas of the market where you're seeing strength? Is it something like energy, which had been a leadership group kind of near uh, highs or uh, something that's just starting to emerge? Give, can you give an example of where, you, where you're seeing opportunities here now? Yeah, sure. So we have models uh, that are all quantitative in nature, but we look for relative strength. You know, we're not mm -hmm. of the belief that we want to diversify across the gamut because you'll have some of the areas of market like growth that are getting hit and canceling out any gains you might have, you know, in defensive names or value names. So we want to look for uh, relative strength and concentrate our portfolio in those areas. And, and by relative strength, we mean something that's going to continue to outperform for several months to even several years. And so we had the inputs into our models are longer term in nature. They're not just, you know, OK, this uh, growth stock or um, this Nasdaq stock has, 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 has really exploded off the lows this year. You know, it, it takes a lot more than that. And, and it's something, uh, one big component for us is a risk adjusted return as well. So we want to see mm -hmm. something that's performing, um, outperforming versus its risk characteristics as well. So it's outperforming what it's expected to do. And right now, a lot of those um, a, a lot of the names on our screens would be from the value areas, you know, and, yeah. and, and you mentioned the energy area that has really emerged over the last year. It's, uh, it's hit a couple, uh, a couple months of, uh, a rough patch, but I think that was kind of a short term rotation, but some of those names are still on our screens, but a lot of the value names, um, a lot of the names, if you look at, like you showed that one month. Uh, or the one-year chart of the S&P. If you look at a one-year chart and you see higher highs and higher lows, that's the type of thing that you want to see. You don't. We're not looking for a flash in the pan pop off of a 52-week uh, low. That's probably just going to be uh, another mean reversion bounce to a lower high. We want to see areas of the market that are, uh, you know, hitting higher highs, higher lows, and um, uh, a lot of those names, like I mentioned, are, are similar to the, the value names that. Uh, mm just showed. That's super helpful, Dana. And it's and it's I, it's such a fascinating part of 2022. While the major benchmarks just in this downtrends 
there were pl- there are names that I feel like at any given point there were stocks that were actually showing that type of pattern, right? Showing some strength and uh, and 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 consistent strength. So good reminder to focus. I, I always tell people that it's always a good time to own good charts. And thanks for reinforcing that with your comments, Dana. Listen, it's awesome to see you. Thanks for coming on the show again. We'll hope to have you again on uh, soon. Say hi to the Midwest for us, and we'll talk to you again soon. Will do. Thanks, Dave. Always great to be on. That's Dana Lyons. Dana's a uh, portfolio manager at J Lyons Fund Management coming to us from Chicago, also the editor of the Lion's Share Report. I love that first chart. We, we've talked about that when he, when he, uh, versions of that chart when he's come on uh, before. Thinking about forward 10-year returns and just the fact that someone like Dana approaching this market, we get so caught up in what I call the flickering ticks, right? The short-term movements. The first chart is looking at 10-year returns and thinking about more of the secular shifts in the market. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think it's a great reminder to not worry if you're, you know, if you're if your runway is long enough, worry less about the short-term day-to-day movements and more about the structural trends and make sure you're positioned uh, along with those emerging trends. It reminds me of a conversation I had with uh, John Markman at uh, ChartCon 2022. We were talking about uh, themes, thinking about AI and electric vehicles and, and things that had staying power, right? more more emerging themes and thinking about those multi-year uh, potential payouts. Great take there, as always, from uh, Dana Lyons at J Lyons Fund Management. We need to wrap today's show, folks. Go to the three and three. Let's hit on three charts in three minutes that tell the story of this market environment. Here's chart number one. I loved uh, Dana's chart about mid-cap value, and I think about those Morningstar style boxes a lot, right? Sort of the you know large, mid, small, growth, core, and value. And I often look at those nine to see what sort of movements are happening relative to one another. In that note, I wanted to highlight uh, small caps. Uh, Russell 2000 ETF is ticker IWM. Um, what's interesting about the small cap ETF, it's just like the S&P has rallied up to its 200-day moving average. Uh, and also rallied up to a trend line uh, using the major highs over the last 12 months. You see small caps and a lot of other charts as well rallying up to potential areas of resistance. I've highlighted this pink shaded area on the chart of the IWM. That's based on a couple different things. If you take the uh, November 2021 high, which was the peak there for uh, small caps, take the low in June of 2022, 38.2% of the way is right around 191 on the IWM. That's the upper end of that pink shaded area. The lower area, comprises some of these previous lows and previous highs. You can see a number of times we've bumped up to that area. We're kind of right there. So when you have this big reversal pattern, this is called a bullish engulfing pattern that we had today, sort of opening higher and closing lower, engulfing the previous day's range, also called a bearish outside day right at resistance, suggests to me we're seeing some short-term weakness underneath the hood of the markets. Chart number two is within the technology space. As I mentioned, I was scanning for stocks making new swing highs and uh, new lows, just looking for some actionable ideas. Technology has been an interesting space. While generally speaking, technology has not been great, there have been random pockets of improvement. Seagate comes to mind as something that may be reversing. And what I mean by that is, if you think of the sell-off through most of 2022, starting in September, this is more of a basing pattern, meaning more of a kind of a rectangle pattern on the chart, right? Consistent resistance level around 57, 57, 50. Consistent support around 48 or 49. We've now exited that to the upside. Today, we gapped higher, chopped around a little bit. I think as long as it holds that breakout level, this could be the beginning of something further. But uh, to what we just talked about, uh, I think uh, the proof is in the price, right? Show me higher highs and higher lows. Show me there's some sustained power to that reversal. Then I will start to believe the potential upside to be had beyond what we've seen so far. Finally, I'll highlight airlines. A lot of stocks moving quite a bit today. You have a lot of earnings this week, and I think we'll see a lot of dislocation in prices over the next couple of weeks as, uh, as investors digest uh, earnings estimates and uh, potential surprises. I wanted to highlight on the chart of UAL, another analysis using Fibonacci retracements. Take the 2022 uh, range and, and taking the low from, uh, sorry, 2021's high in March, 2022 uh, March low there. You can see 61.8% of the way is around $51. You can see that lines up pretty well with the peak we had in the spring of last year. You can see that lines up perfectly with where we're at this week, once again, we have this bearish outside day, which you'll see on a lot of stocks. That's where we gap higher at the open. You close below the previous range. In general, that talks about market distribution during the day. That shows you that initial signs of buying power were overwhelmed by the desire to take profits. 
short-term negative on the chart of airlines, a group that has been working pretty well. Folks, that's a wrap for the show. I want to thank Dana Lyons from J Lyons Fund Management joining us from Chicago, sharing some great long-term charts. All of our previous interviews are at stockchartstv.com. For Stock Charts in Redmond, Washington, I'm Dave Keller. Be safe, be well. See you tomorrow. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.